This video is for you if you know you absolutely have got to make it in this world. I'm talking like doing it big. I'm sitting here today, 32 years old. I'm doing roughly $300,000 per day in revenue, really enterprising up, reaching a different phase in my career. But I have to tell you, it wasn't always like this. And in this video, I want to hopefully unlock a couple things for you that might have you stuck. The centerpiece of all of it is that innate desire, that passion that your life will change. If I'm speaking to you, it's because you have that in your heart right now. That was me when I was a young kid and it's translated through so many different fields of life. Now the world that we're in today compared to when I first started building, it's very different and it's taken me a moment to appreciate the noise out there, all of the distractions that fill a young mind. And so my intent with these stories and this message is to help you find your North Star and ultimately make it. You haven't made it yet, but I'm telling you, if you have that burning fucking desire in your heart, as always, fuck monetization. But if you have that like in here, I am going to unlock that for you. And this is the first day of you accelerating fucking everything. So this starts with a weekend lyric that really hits home for me. And it's from the song Snow Child. He says, I used to pray when I was 18. If I didn't make it, then I'd probably make my, I don't think you can say that on YouTube, but basically he'd off himself. And that resonates so much with me. And this happened when I was young. It started when I was young. It, it was a basketball thing. I'm an ex-athlete. Any ex-athlete out there, I think a lot of y'all can probably relate to this, but when you want it so bad that nothing else matters, that's when everything changes. So I remember my first real obsessive moment. It happened my sophomore year of high school. I'm this 5'3 kid, and I wanted so bad to make the varsity team. The reality of the situation is I wasn't athletic enough. I hadn't hit puberty yet. But that summer, it was the first time I found this superpower that later propelled me in my future life. Now keep in mind, I don't have social media. I don't have these distractions. All I knew is I wanted to make that basketball team. And so I told myself, all I can do is give everything I have here. And that summer, all I did was train multiple times per day, every single day. I had friends doing social things, you know, meeting girls, pursuing other factors of their life. And all I did was get up at seven in the morning, which is crazy for a sophomore in high school, I would do my strength and conditioning. I got all these box jumps. I would run hills and then I would go to the gym. I'd do my you know, ball handling, skill stuff. And then I'd usually play pickup. And it was three plus workouts a day all summer, putting my heart and soul into that shit. And you identify with the mission. You become the mission. But the most important thing with that mission is nothing else matters. All of those other distractions. I progressed incredibly well that summer. Okay. I did not make the varsity team. It was a lesson in loss. It was a lesson in having to, to work smarter. It broke me. It broke me. I still remember I gave everything in those tryouts and, you know, I'm busting my ass and thought I played pretty well. Got called up to the varsity court at one point. Actually still remember to this day, I had a senior like pick my pocket when I was trying to dribble up the court because I, again, I just wasn't there athletically. And I still remember when the coach went back to the you know, room after, after tryouts and they go back there for 30, 45 minutes, the whole coaching staff, and they put together the list of who's on what and they post it on the, the bleachers. And I still remember like still feeling optimistic. You know, I put everything into this. I've, I've really voiced that I deserve a spot on this team. And unfortunately, when that came back out, um, I was not, I thought maybe I'd get a swing spot, you know, of RC JV. And I was in the middle of the JV thing. And I went behind the bleachers and I cried and I still got teased for that. Like, you know, the, the, the whole year, the next year, like, oh, you were the kid that fucking cried when you make the team. And I took that shit personally and I still take that shit personally. And then fast forward to when I wanted to play college ball. So I took two years off after high school. Uh, I just was focused on college. And then I actually coached at a high school and basically had this passion reignited for the game, coaching. And I decided I have to make this fucking team. And so I went psycho mode again. And these are the prime years of most young men's college experience, right? This is often when you're partying. This is when you're often having fun. 
I had about nine months to prepare and I went demon mode. I'm telling you guys, nothing else mattered. I put in the time. I transformed myself physically. I went from like 6'2", kind of skinny. I think I grew another inch. I think I grew another inch after high school, so maybe not then. But I, I really fucking transformed. I went from like, you know, decent to playing above the rim, skills. But I learned from those pastimes too. Life is political, right? So I started to develop friendships with the team. And during this whole process, I, I decided this process when my school season ended coaching. And during that time, the college season's still going, right? So I have like a whole, like I said, like nine months to prepare. That team ends up winning the D2 national title, which was the worst thing that could happen for me because now all of a sudden they can get any fucking recruit they want, right? They, who cares about a walk-on? Who cares about my spot? And like, I remember when that happened, I was like, Phew. and again, we round into summer. I know it's an uphill battle. I developed a couple close relationships with key players on that team. And I'm giving everything to this shit. But I still remember some nights, like the, the past experience of high school bit at me. But I just kept telling myself, like, it's all or nothing. It's do or die. Like, I am giving everything to this. And I will at least sleep well at night knowing I'm giving it everything. And again, I never thought about all the other experiences I was missing out on. Okay? I never thought about any of that. Because my North Star became the obsession. I was so dialed in with what I wanted to become, I lost myself in the process. Now, fast forward, I did, I did end up making that team. I ended up making it as the, the 12th guy on the bench, a walk-on. There were some political things that, you know, the two best players vouched for me and coach gave me a spot. And those were two of the best years of my life. A lot of lessons learned, a lot of experiences, ended up getting to play, you know, high level D2 college basketball. My second game was at Duke. You know, I got to shake coach K's hand again, as a bench player, but the experience of pouring in to something so obsessively, referring back to that weekend line, that I need this. I'm putting my heart and soul into this. It is my everything. Guess what? That translated to the business world. When the Amazon opportunity opened up early days of genius, the same fire took hold of my fucking soul. And it's by any means necessary. I want you guys to understand that. It's by any means necessary. When I was playing college hoops, I was looking for any advantage. When I poured into Genius, I knew I needed to work 100-hour weeks. Hey, a little Adderall abuse, like whatever, you know? But these are the things. There's another Drake lyric on nine, you know? And I made a decision last night that I would die for it. How many people want it that bad? Again, this video is for the people that do want it that bad. When you find that opportunity and you commit to it and you obsess, all the other bullshit doesn't fucking matter anymore. I'm telling you, all the things that people complain about, friends ridiculing you, family, this, that. No, you are on your cause. Your heart and your soul is into that shit. Okay, that's what you do. That's who you are. You become it. And the end result for that was a life-changing exit that changed everything for me. I was able to take some time off. I was able to reset. And then you get back into the game and you find that same fire. You find that same obsessive nature. You find that same passion. And that is the shit that's going to guide you. I'm telling you guys. I'm telling you. Like from the bottom of my heart, if you know you need to make it, you will make it. But you need to commit to making it. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense in the context of this video. You need to find that obsessive nature and you need to let that guide you. And you will find more fulfillment and more joy and more love in that entire process than you will with any other bullshit in this world. I'm telling you, the time is now. If not now, when? If you're watching me because of Ecom, you've seen the TikTok shit. That's another window that allows for obsession. It should wake up your soul. It should give you dreams of the fucking mega yachts, the mega mansions. Fuck the Ferrari. Fuck the little kid shit. Put your everything into this world. Learn, build, be curious. I started from nothing. I didn't have any crazy resources when I started Amazon. I was just a kid and a laptop. But that obsessive force, that obsessive nature, it took me to places that would be hard to honestly understand if you told 16-year-old me that. So I'm telling you right now, 
commit, put your heart into it, unlock a level of love, unlock a level of drive, unlock a level of energy, and there isn't a damn thing you cannot achieve in this world. I'll leave you with this. Nice little quote. You can do anything, but you can't do everything.